Hello, my friends. This is Dr. Ginny Barrow, and today's coaching is right before our World Self Care Summit, which will happen on the 16th of June and again in October. Our first one was back in March, and it is our way to stay intentional and committed and consistent within our community at Executive Bound and with natural intuition with my co-host, Sensei Victoria Whitfield, so that we can continue to self-care and not wait until our mental health and our brain health is compromised. We do this three times a year. And when we are in our World Self-Care Summit, we teach you the habits and practices you can use throughout the weeks, months, and quarters so that your year is filled with practices that help you restore, recharge, and replenish. And that is so important for us as we are high-performing, talented, high-achieving leaders. We want to support our own health and support the health of our teams. And we can't do that if we are not taking care of ourselves. And so when we take care of ourselves, we are role modeling for those around us, including our children. I have a 16-year-old. And when he sees me working out and taking care of my body and eating nutritious foods and moving, guess what? He also gets inspired to the point where he's also training to take his fitness to a whole new level at 16 years old. He's an athlete. He plays baseball and basketball, like many of your family members probably do. They are into sports. They are into cheerleading, all different types of activities that when they see us as their parents, as their uncles and aunts, taking care of ourselves, we are sending a very strong message. For me, that message is that our health matters. Your health and your life matters. And also as a byproduct of all that, we feel better, more energized. We perform better. We show up in a very positive mind frame to our work instead of getting back down with everything that is happening around us, getting sucked in by the news and the negativity that's all around us. And instead, we can zoom out and put everything in perspective because we are taking care of our brain health. And I am always learning. I am never going to claim to be the expert in mental health and brain health. There are so many experts out there. For example, I've been listening to Daniel Amen, who's been around for a long time. He's 70 years old, almost 70, and he's still going. And he's put together so many studies and podcasts and books that you can definitely get your hands on to improve your brain health and many other experts out there who care about this topic. So today, as I prepare for the World Self-Care Summit coming up, I pulled out one of my cards from one of my peers, Susie Shield, and her deck of cards is a love deck of cards. And I shuffle the cards and I pulled out this card that I want to share with you as it relates to your self-care and being a high-performing leader. So even though the topic may seem personal, I want to apply it to us at work. The card is love. And it says, feel the love within you. Allow it to say, I love you. And give yourself an inner namaste. For those of you who are not into yoga, Namaste means the light in me sees the light in you. Now, what a beautiful phrase. The light in me sees the light in you. The layman's description of that is the part of me that is my highest sees the part of you that is your highest. What a beautiful imagery. Imagine walking around your organization walking among your team, walking among your peers, your colleagues, tons of stakeholders that you deal with on a daily basis, and carrying around that the light in you sees the light in them, how does that look? How would that look in our environments? For me, that looks like this. 
that means that I would look at my team and I would be interested and intentional about finding what they're really great at, finding where they shine, what they do so well, their superpowers, their zone of genius, as I call it, the unique value proposition. And I would mirror back to them by expressing to them what I see. Wow, Ginny, you're so good at doing analysis work. Ginny, you're so good at problem solving. I'm so glad you're on our team because every time we have a problem, you can dissect it. You can help us reverse engineer a problem into a solution. And we are so grateful that you're here with us. That would be a way to see their light. And imagine if that were to happen to you, how will you feel if somebody in your environment at work was able to do that, to reflect to you what they see in you. Now, we know that words are very powerful. And we know because there have been people in our lives who have used harsh words that we have never forgotten, right? Some people have put us down. They may have tried to belittle us. They may have tried to hurt us. And we remember those words. And sometimes the people were not even aware they were using the words they were using. That happened to me where a family member actually said that I said hurtful words and I had no idea that I had done so. So sometimes the person who says those words isn't even aware that they're in any way impacting you negatively. On the flip side of that, there are many people in our lives, like I have, people who have given us encouragement. People who have said, I believe in you. I remember Nuni, who was the landlord, who I stayed with Nuni when my mother came to the U.S. to try to figure things out. And I was left behind on purpose as a plan. And for those two years, I lived with my aunt and with my landlord, Nuni. Nuni was 82 years old. And Nuni was so kind and generous. She volunteered to take care of me while my mother came to the U.S. to figure things out before I could get my visa papers. And Nuni always said to me, Ginny, you're going to do whatever you set your mind to. I never forgot that, especially when I arrived in the U.S. in 1983 as a teenager starting high school. The world was upside down. I didn't know the culture, didn't know anyone, and I didn't know the language. I didn't speak English. And I always remember Nuni saying to me, Ginny, you're going to accomplish whatever you set your mind to. And it was those kind words that truly helped me see myself in a way that I didn't see myself back then when I was 12 years old. And she said those words to me. So words matter. The words you share with your team are very impactful. I've also worked with clients who have shared with me that there were certain managers that they had that crushed them. They crushed them because they didn't believe in them. They crushed them because they didn't support them. They put them down, verbally put them down. Some of them even said they were abusive to them. And it breaks my heart when I hear stories like that because as a leader, when we are self-aware, when we know that our words matter, we watch and we are intentional about what we say, how we say it, and when we say it. And it's almost like the movie Bambi, right? If you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all. And that is not actually true. We know that, right? We have to give advice and also give constructive feedback to our employees. I get that. But sometimes if we speak without intention, if we're not listening to the words that we are using, we could truly create a lot of damage for some of our employees. So be kind, use words that encourage them so you can demonstrate that you see the light in them. And in doing so, you can also help them improve and advance and grow. So it's not all rainbows and roses, right? We still have to be honest. We still have to be truthful. And we can be supportive and encouraging with our employees and our teams and our stakeholders. But we tend to do this much better with our higher-ups. Why? Because we want to be in their good graces. So 
sometimes there's people who manage up and I did a whole video on managing up. And if you're one of those people who treat the people above you better than the people at your level or the people below you, meaning in the hierarchy, then this is something to be aware of because this all becomes part of your personal brand. And that tarnishes your brand when you are seeing as someone who treats people unfairly and differently based on their organizational chart position and level and role. And back to namaste, not back to being kind, it's really important as we look at our spaces, our workplaces, that we see how are we fitting into this space? What are we adding to this space? How are we contributing to the well-being of the people around me? Am I lifting people or am I crushing them? Is your ego bigger than your vision? Do you get in your own way because you want to feel significant? You are willing to do whatever you have to, to feel significant. And that may mean putting some people down. And if you notice that you are doing that, or maybe you haven't noticed of listening to this, now that you have that self-awareness, begin to be more vigilant about witnessing yourself. How am I showing up in these environments? How am I supporting my teams? How am I showing them that I see the light in them? And it is once you have that awareness, it's so much easier to manage because then it's a matter of, ooh, I see my tendencies. I know I also had one of my clients be very honest and share that he was noticing that he was not patient with his team and that he wasn't developing them the way that he believes he should be developing them. And he had that epiphany moment where he realized that for his career to continue to grow in advance and for him to be considered for higher level leadership roles, that he had to become more inclusive and more conscientious of how he was leading managing, engaging, coaching, and mentoring his team. Because sometimes as individual contributors, it's very easy for us to just focus on ourselves and focus on our performance. Well, when we are leaders, we're not only caring for ourselves, we're also caring for the people around us. And I know you are a leader in your life too. So even if you don't have a team of people to care for, just notice your intention, notice the words that you're using, notice the behaviors you're displaying and your character when you are interacting with others in your organization. And you, if you are a leader, in my eyes, we have an extra responsibility because our words in that position of authority creates a pathway where someone feels empowered and they feel supported by you championed, sponsored, coached, and mentored by you, or it could also create a nightmare for someone who's under you, working with you, and feels undervalued, overworked, underappreciated, put down. And the use cases of clients who have been crushed by a manager are way too many than I wish to share with you. And so how can you prevent that from happening on your watch? And that's my goal. As someone who watches these training videos, I'm in, I am encouraged to believe that if you're listening, this is something you're going to watch out for so that you're not creating a nightmare for someone who's working for you. And let's be conscious about our boundaries too. This is how we can show somebody that we care about them and we can be self-aware about our demands. I have a friend who received an email yesterday from a client that said, can you present to us tomorrow? Just like that. Now, obviously that client was not somebody who was thinking about, wow, it's actually dinner time and tomorrow is within 12 hours. And this person has to put together a presentation for my group within 12 hours. There are many times when we're not aware and we're not intentional of the demands and the requests that we are making. 
And if you as a leader and as a person listening to this, have you have control over the words you use with people, the demands you make, the requests that you want from your team or from people around you, and put yourself in their shoes. How would you feel if at seven o'clock at night, you received an email from your manager or from a partner or from a vendor who asks you to give a presentation tomorrow within 12 hours of you receiving that email? How would you feel? And so if you are that empathetic, you would be that person who doesn't make those kinds of requests. Because by the way, many times when we do make those kinds of requests, it is indicative that we are poor planners, that we are disorganized, and we did not plan ahead to ask these individuals or individual for a presentation ahead of time. So I had one of our assistants back when I began my first job at Prudential, who used to say, she used to have a plaque on her desk that used to say, lack of planning on your part does not constitute an emergency on mine. And I love that. And I always remember that plaque because it reminded me to get my act together so that my emergencies and my lack of planning will not turn out to be somebody else's nightmare. And I have been able to do that most of my career. Of course, there are exceptions and things do come up. But when that is your pattern of behavior, where you are making demands that are very unrealistic constantly and consistently, that's a pattern. So if you're doing that, this is your invitation to notice what's behind that. What is causing you to make these late demands and requests? And how can you move forward by tweaking that behavior taking into, into account how it's negatively impacting your team, who, by the way, is probably running on fumes or your team is spread thin because of the uh, less resources that we have these days. So I'm going to leave you with that for today's training. I'm getting ready to start my Visionary Leaders Circle for the month. And it's a pleasure always to connect with you. If you're listening to this training and it's before July 10th, I invite you to join us at the Women's Fearless Leaders Challenge if you want more confidence, courage, and clarity to continue to grow and advance in your career. And if you want to do that in a community of empowering women who are ready to take themselves to a whole new level and to do it with me as your coach and guide. It will be my pleasure and it is absolutely complimentary. So don't miss this opportunity. We are going to limit the seating to ensure that everyone gets the best experience possible. But get ready to bring your journals, to go to breakouts, to truly engage with the five topics of each day, which you can learn all about at fearlessleaderschallenge.com. Live with purpose live with joy, and I look forward to seeing you the week of July 10th. See you soon.